So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship Your holy name. Sing that with me. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And my hand hit the keyboard 
And now it's on a weird sound, so you gotta you gotta bear with me for a second here. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. Michigan is one of the most beautiful states in the United States of America. Man, this is always happens. I get way too excited, and then I'm banging on this keyboard, and I don't know what I'm doing. Okay! Sorry! Right, I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on, Mr. Salmon. Let's give our sound guy a round of applause. It's really great to be with you. Actually, this is perfect. Uh, this next song, I actually, I want to I wanna dedicate it to a woman I, I met um, behind the stage earlier. Her name is Linda, and she's a... She's a cancer survivor. And she was sharing me how God uh, used this song to help her. And, and that's the amazing thing when you write these songs. We just write them out of our hearts to God as, in some ways, just as a gift to Him. And we have no idea what He's going to do with them. So, Linda, um, thank, you for, thank you for inspiring me. It don't have a job. Pay your bills. Won't buy you a home in Beverly Hills. Won't fix your life in five years instead.
faithfulness, oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters and to mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, oh God. song about 10 years ago this year. And, uh, I wrote it because I was going through a difficult time and struggling with the will of God. So I did what anybody else would have did. I, I prayed and, and then I turned to the Bible because I didn't know what else to say. And what I found in the scriptures was a man named Paul. And he struggled too sometimes with things in his life. Sometimes there were things that bothered him about himself. And he said he prayed to God three times saying, could you please take this away? He called it, it was like a thorn in his side. He said three times I asked the Lord to take it away. And every time what Jesus said to him was, my grace is sufficient for you in your weakness. And all, for whatever reason, I would heard that scripture so many times, but for some reason on that day 10 years ago, all of a sudden I heard it in a brand new way. I realized that Jesus said his grace was sufficient in my weakness. Not outside my weakness, not in my strength, not in my intellect, not in my pride, not in my wonderfully gray hair. <laughs> Nothing. Grace was most sufficient when I felt weakest, when I felt most incapable, when I felt like I didn't have it together the most. That's when actually God is able to do the most with grace in my Woo! life and in your life. So maybe you're one of those people and you know that's true, but for whatever reason, the feelings aren't always there. But truth isn't, doesn't depend on feelings. Feelings come and go, feelings change, but the truth of God remains. So maybe if you and I sing this, the more we sing it, the, the more the distance between our heads and our hearts, maybe we'll shrink a little bit tonight. Amen? Woo! Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong And you lead us in a soul You lead us in the soul of your salvation And all oh, your people sing alone Yeah, we sing alone So remember your people Remember your children remember your promise, oh God. 